So, a few weeks ago for the GMTK Jam 2022, I went back to a video I made a couple of years ago on how to achieve a pixelated rendering effect in Unity for 3D games. Back then I used a dual camera approach where I had one camera render the scene to a downscaled render texture and then I plotted that texture to the UI and rendered the UI with another camera. And while that approach still works fantastically, it has a couple of problems. Mainly, I really don't want to have to set up two cameras for each scene I want this effect in. And secondly, objects on the screen will not register pointer events since I'm not rendering the camera that renders the scene to the screen, but a secondary. So this week I wanted to try out and get a new way to achieve the same effect but without these drawbacks and I'm doing so using the scriptable render feature in the universal render pipeline. Mind you, I am still learning a lot of things about the scriptable render features and the URP. I will just walk you through the code I wrote and show you how to set it up and how it works. If you liked the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And if you have a comment or a question, please leave a comment down below and I will try to reasonably reply to all of them. And this said, I'll see you at the end of the video. I hope you like it. I don't know. <laughs> The first thing you want to do is create a new c -sharp script with a pixelized feature class in it. You can rename this class whatever you want, just make sure it inherits from scriptable renderer feature so that you're able to override the create and add render passes methods. Inside of this class we'll create a new custom pass settings class that will hold our passes settings such as the render pass event when the effect will be applied and the specific screen height we'll use to calculate the pixelated resolution of the final rendered image. Making this into a custom setting class is not strictly required, but it will make our lives easier if we decide to expand the effect in the future. Declare two private fields for the settings and the actual custom pass object. The latter type is pixelized pass, which is a class that we have not created yet, but hold on a second and you'll see what it is. Override the virtual create method and initialize the custom pass calling its constructor. Then, override the add renderer passes method. The only instruction you really need is the latter, which adds the custom pass to the queue of passes to be executed each frame. But I also want to make sure that this effect is not applied in the scene view, so I'll not add it to the queue for the scene camera. Now create a new class called pixelize pass. Again, the name can be whatever, just make sure it inherits from scriptable render pass. Declare a custom pass settings field to hold our settings, then declare two render target identifiers for the camera's color texture and the pixelated buffer. Since we are going to render the pixelated image to a temporary render texture each frame, we'll need its ID to issue this operation. So we'll declare a private integer field initialized using the shader.property2id method as you see on the screen right now. Finally, declare a private material and two integers to hold the pixelation material and the pixelated screen's width and height. In the class constructor, we'll pass a settings object. The base class we're inheriting from provides a render pass event field that we need to assign at this stage with the value we'll choose in the renderer features inspector. Lastly, if the material is null, we'll create a new material using a shader that we'll write later. The first method we're going to override is on camera setup. In here, we'll assign the camera's color target to the color buffer and extract its descriptor into a separate variable. Let's set the value of our pixel screen height field to the one we've chosen in settings and let's calculate our target width using the camera's aspect ratio. Here I'm adding 0.5 before casting it to an integer, just a way to round it up, you can also use the ceiling function. Let's now set three vector tools in the material for the block count, basically the pixelated screen's resolution, and the block size in terms of screen space UV coordinates. I'll also pass the half block size vector to avoid calculating it per pixel in the shader, but this is not mandatory. The names you choose for these three shader properties can be whatever, but just make sure to keep this the same between your script and your shader, that we'll see later. Finally, let's copy the new width and height to the descriptor and get a temporary render texture from the common buffer for our pixel buffer. Make sure the filter mode is set to point or your rendering is going to be all blurry when upscaled. Now let's override the execute function. First, we need to get a common buffer from the common buffer pool. After that, let's copy our camera's color target, the color buffer, to the pixel buffer using our special material via the blit method. 
After that, again, we'll copy our pixel buffer back to the color buffer to make sure the result is rendered to the screen. Notice how we don't need to apply our material a second time. Lastly, let's tell the scriptable render context to execute the command buffer and then release it back into the command buffer pool to avoid any leaks. On each frame, after executing the pass, we want to release the render textures we requested. Override the on-camera cleanup method and release the temporary render texture with the ID stored into pixel buffer ID. Now let's write the shader. The setup is the same as most vertex fragment shaders. In the properties, declare an underscore main text texture to D property. This cannot be named whatever, so make sure you get this right. The attributes and varying structs are the vertex and fragment functions respective input value types. Declare an underscore main text texture shader field with two float4 vectors for the texel size and the scaling and offset. These, just as the shader property, have to be named exactly this way. This is the critical pass. Declare a sampler state object named exactly sampler underscore point underscore clamp. Unity will automatically understand from its name how to sample the texture and this will allow us to have crisp nearest neighbor downscaling of our camera's render target instead of the annoying linear blurring that we'd get otherwise. Lastly, let's declare three float2d vectors with the same names that you use in the script. The vertex function is quite simple, so take a good look at it while it's on the screen and let's move on. This is the fun part. Let's open a pass block named pixelation and let's define the fragment function. The reason why this is a separate pass than the vertex function is that if we want to add subsequent effects like an outline for example, we could share the same vertex function and only define a fragment function for each separate pass. Here we'll calculate the block position by multiplying the pixels UVs by the block count value we set via the script. Then let's calculate the block center by multiplying this by the block size and adding half the block size to make sure it's centered on the virtual downscaled pixel. Lastly, let's sample the main texture using our custom sampler at the block center coordinate and return the sampled color value. Okay, we are now in the editor, so let's go to the main camera and as the first thing, let's make sure its projection is set as orthographic. You could go perspective, but I suggest you go orthographic as it will look way better and you'll see what I mean in a second. Now let's locate in our project the uh, URP render data asset. It's usually under the settings folder, but I put it into a renderer folder just for this example. And all you really have to do is press on the add render feature button and select our pixelized feature or whatever you named it in your own project. And as you can see, I click this, the effect is applied. The first time you will get uh, an error here, but you can just clear it. It's not a problem. And here you can change the screen height to play around with the resolution. Yeah. So uh, assuming your game is in a 169 aspect, some common values would be 144 by 256 or for example 360 by 640. And as you can see, the pixels remain the same size um, relatively to the size of the screen. But I'll now show you what it looks like with the perspective projection. And as you can see, it looks like shit because you lose a lot of detail in the background having smaller objects being pixelated with the same sized pixels as foreground up. So I'll just recommend you use orthographic projection. And something that is very cool with this approach instead of the dual camera approach is that when I press play, thanks to a little script that I have to register pointer events on these uh, geometric objects, You'll see that when I move my cursor on top of these objects, they will turn yellow because they are still able to record pointer events. Um, yeah, this is basically it. Uh, you probably wanna make sure that you're using tune shaders. Um, this is a simple, simple tune shader that I made here, but um, I'll show you what it looks like when you do not use a tune shader. So if I create a material, with the default shader and I moved it here, you will see that the smooth shading looks really bad because it gets pixelated and it's not crisp. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and the tutorial. And yeah, it's 40 degrees here, I cannot get myself to do anything creative, so you got yourself a 2020 style Watip tutorial. This said, 
please consider subscribing, liking the video, commenting to help me out with the algorithm. And in case you decide to stick around, see you next time.